Good morning, church. Well, I promised you in an email that I would be recording with a gamer headset on and uh, recording onto the downloaded app of GarageBand. Well, those exciting days are going to have to wait for another week because Governor Inslee and his team gave an interpretation to the churches that we are allowed in our sanctuaries with a limited number of people to record worship in order to reach out to you, to nourish your souls, to help you feel connected and cared for in this time with the stay-at-home order. So as we get started for worship, you might want to get your personal Bible and open up to the prophet Ezekiel in the 37th chapter. I'll be preaching from that section later on. You might want to light a candle to remind you of Christ's presence right there for you in your own room, your own living room. You might want to look out the window at the awakening spring foliage, uh, something that helps you know that God of the creation is God with us. And once you're ready to worship, then begin with hitting that triangular shape on the screen, and that will begin the recording. Loving and gracious God, we gather here this morning in your presence and ask that you would unite our hearts together before you when we physically cannot be together. Help us be one. Speak into our lives. Help us to quiet the noise and be present to you. Give us a living word that you might have a message for each of us and draw us more and more towards life in Jesus. Amen. Thank you. I'm also going to invite now Jennifer Brown and her daughter Tala Brown to come forward. They're our lay leaders today. And if you're following at home in a uh, printed worship bulletin, Jennifer is the lead voice and Tala is the responsive voice. So you would read along with Tala. Let's join with them now as they bring our responsive reading. Please join us in the responsive reading. We have been in the wilderness, discerning and looking, seeking and dreaming. We have been in the wilderness, grieving and wondering, praying and hoping. We have been in the wilderness, longing and looking, looking and longing. We have been in the wilderness, but we have not been alone. For God is with us every step of the way. So we dare to worship the God of our darkest nights and our brightest days. Please join your hearts with ours as we worship our holy God. Thank you so much, Jennifer and Tala. I'd like us to share the peace of Christ, and as we do so, if, if you have the blessing of worshiping with someone there in your home, then one of you would say, peace of Christ be with you, and the other would say, and also with you. If you are worshiping by yourself today, then I'd like you to answer back to me and to just look right at the computer screen or right at your smartphone or your tablet, and the Spirit will do the rest. So, from Jesus' peace to you, the peace of Christ be with you. Thank you. The next thing uh, for us in our worship is a beautiful song coming to us through our praise team. Uh, recording for us is Carla Epperson on piano and Evan Hogue on percussion. We have Ann Lyman and Robin Derby, Janice Miller, Fern Hogue, and Larry Hogue. They're all here to record this music for us today. So thank you. Would you bring your gifts to the Lord?
If you're like me, it doesn't take very long uh, when I'm in the presence of our loving God for me to realize that God is holy and I am not. God is all loving and I am not. And so that brings us to a time of prayer and a time of confession. I'm going to invite Jennifer and Tala Brown back up to lead us in our responsive confession. Again, if you have the document at home, you can choose to read along with Tala's voice. And if not, just enter into prayer in your heart and join mine as we confess before our loving God. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Spirit of wilderness, you are constantly bringing people new life. Today we confess to you and to an, to one another one another that we feel dried up we are overwhelmed by this pandemic and the world's great need we feel cut off and far from home we have lost ourselves in the wilderness clear our hearts breathe life into these weary bones and grant us a fresh start Please continue in personal and silent prayer. Even though there might have been a lot of silence in our lives recently as we have been staying at home or working at home, it's different when we choose to be silent together before the Lord in prayer. So thank you for joining your heart with mine as we came before our loving God who knows us absolutely and, you know, even knowing us completely, loves us perfectly. So friends, it is in that love and that grace, in the mystery of the cross, that we are forgiven. Nothing holds us back. So receive the good news of God's gospel for you. We have been granted a fresh start. There is life to be breathed into our weary bones. Amen. As is our custom for our church, I spend some time with our youngest disciples. And so for the children and the teenagers who are worshiping with me this morning, I want you to pay special attention God's love for you is always constant from the very beginning before your first breath until after you take your last breath. But in between, there are times that get hard. Am I right? This coronavirus is hard. It's hard on people we love. It's hard on not being with friends. It's hard to not go to school. It's hard not to have our favorite places open, even our parks. And it's not only hard on our country, it's hard on all the countries of the whole world. And sometimes we might get really tired of it. And that's okay. We will get tired of it. But I want you to know as we get tired of it, God will never get tired of us. God's love is going to come and renew us. And we are going to make, we are going to make it through. So take a big breath big breath of peace, calm yourself, know that God's love is flowing into you, surely bigger than my love for you, and my love for you is huge. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that your love would flood each boy, each girl, each young man, each young woman, that they would be filled from the bottom of their feet up overflowing out of the top of their heads, so that they would be a blessing to those around them and you would fill them and sustain them in this time of challenge. Amen. So if you have your Bible, you can turn with me to the 37th chapter of the prophet Ezekiel. I'm going to take the first 14 verses for us today, beginning with verse 1. Ezekiel says that the hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out of the he brought me out by the spirit of the lord and set me in the middle of a valley it was full of bones he led me back and forth among them and i saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley bones that were very dry 
He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. And then he said to me, Prophesy to the bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. And I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, And the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked. The tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then the Lord said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, mortal, and say to it, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, Come, breath, from the four winds, and breathe into these slain that they may live. And so I prophesied as I was commanded, and breath entered them, and they came to life and stood up on their feet a vast army. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, our hope is gone, we are cut off. Therefore, therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live. And I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I am the Lord that has spoken. I have done it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of the most visionary prophets of the Old Testament was this priest by the name Ezekiel. He lived about 2,600 years ago. He witnessed the terrible siege of Jerusalem by the Babylonians in which Jerusalem fell. It was 587 B.C., He spent years in exile along with other Jewish leaders in what is now modern-day Iraq. There, the hand of the Lord was upon him to proclaim hope in a time of hopelessness. Ezekiel's most remembered vision is the one before us this morning. It's the vision of the dry bones. You know about it. You've maybe even sung, dem bones, dem bones, dem dry bones. Well, even if you're totally oblivious to the Bible, you probably know the story. Well, here's the rest of the story. This vision was Ezekiel's third major vision, a vision of hope for people in a valley of despair. Verses 1 to 3 help us see the hand of the Lord was upon Ezekiel. He says, He brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley, and it was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. And he asked me, Mortal, can these bones live? And I said, O Sovereign Lord, you alone know the answer to that. The valleys are real. That's the first thing I want us to pay attention to this morning. The valleys are real. The 13-year war between King Zedekiah and King Nebuchadnezzar, in that war that's just preceded this fall of Jerusalem, well, one-third of Judah's population starved to death. One-third. One-third were killed in the battle and one-third were carried off as slaves by their captors back to Babylon. The Valley of Judah contained the decayed bones of the victims denied their dignity of a decent burial. Their flesh would have been cleaned by the birds and the scavengers. 
This vision of Ezekiel was more than a figment of his imagination. He had caught glimpse of these bones as he was carried away from his hometown. And there were a great many bones, and they were very, very dry. The valleys are real, and the bones are many. And I don't need to name the human sufferings for you to remember massive loss of life across our planet, genocides and ethnic cleansing, war and conflict. We need to never forget that the valleys are real across our much-loved planet. And the valleys are real for us. The cancer is relentless. The marriage feels dead. The job wasn't great, but now it's gone. The grief is deep. The schools and the parks, restaurants and places of business are closed for now. The days are difficult. The nights are long. The virus is without vaccination. And Lord, as this social distancing grows and stay-at-home orders expand, more people get sick, layoffs increase, anxiety heightens, the people with little get pushed to the edge, and the end of this public health crisis seems far off. Lord, how we need a glimpse of life. And we respond much like Ezekiel did. We cry, oh Lord, can these bones live? And Ezekiel's response was, I don't know. Only you know, Lord. It's in your hands now. I don't know if there's any life left in these bones, any hope remaining in this valley. If there is any hope in the midst of a valley of dry bones, Lord, it is definitely in your hands. It's all too much for our minds to comprehend. The valleys are real. And yet, it is into a valley like this that Ezekiel is called to prophesy. Verse 4 tells us, Ezekiel says, Then the Lord said to me, Prophesy to these bones. And so I prophesied as I was commanded. And I looked, and there were Rattling sound and bones came together, bone to bone. Sinews, flesh, skin. But they're not alive. There is no breath in them. Now I've got to confess to you that I am curious about the content of Ezekiel's sermon. I mean, what do you think Ezekiel said to a valley of dry bones when he was called to preach to them? I don't know if you've ever thought about that. Maybe it's a preacher's curiosity only, but I don't think so. Every believer is asked, what do I say now? Lord, how do I represent you in the midst of this nothingness? I think Ezekiel could have done our Presbyterian thing. He, he could have called a meeting of the bones, and they could have come together on Google Hangout or in Zoom or online to reminisce about the days when they were lively. Maybe the jawbones especially like chewing on such nostalgia. Ezekiel, he could have taken a different approach. He could have taken the consultant approach. He could have said, well, now, all you introverted bones, I want you to get together over there. And all you extroverted bones, I want you to assemble over there. And your feeling type bones, if there are any left in this group, I want you to huddle here close to me. And you reasoning type bones, get your heads together up over there. And maybe through group processes, these bones found ways to work together. You know, the head bone connecting to the neck bone, the neck bone connecting to the shoulder bone. Look at the way that these bones were united Well, maybe Ezekiel did it more directly. Maybe he just said, Thus saith the Lord, get it together. And like a prophet with authority or a priest with responsibility, 
He says, now, you hip bones, join up with those leg bones. You leg bones, you, you fit in with those foot bones. We got work to do here. Move it. Here's my point. Ezekiel did what he could, used what he had. And he had enough faith, enough hope, enough love, enough courage to speak in the most unlikely place of all the earth and to proclaim hope when hope appeared to be gone. Could we? Might we? Verse 9, Ezekiel says, The Lord said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into these slain that they may live. And so he does. He commands and the breath enters them and they come to life and they stand on their feet and they are a vast army. Let me tell you a secret. The word for breath here is the same word for wind. And the word for the spirit in the Bible, it's all one word. The word is ruach in Hebrew. Pneuma in the New Testament. We get pneumonia from the root of pneuma. So when Jesus talks to Nicodemus about being born of the Spirit and he refers to the wind blowing, we don't know from where it comes, the Spirit is blowing in the wind. And I know in our culture, we ask meteorologists to predict the wind and we ask physicians to help us breathe. We ask theologians to help us understand the Spirit. But our Bible makes no such division. The same Spirit that caused Adam and Eve to become living beings is the Holy Spirit that comes with wind and fire at Pentecost and gives believers new life. And friends, we all, we all know a fair number of people who have lost contact with God. We understand that. There have been times when I found it hard to pray. But let me tell you, God is closer than we think. When you think you've lost God, this is what I want you to say. I want you to say, breathe. Breathe. You have to anyway, take a breath. Take a deeper breath. Take a big, slow breath breath. God is closer than the air we breathe. Now, speaking of taking breaths, I remember being in the grocery store when the grocery stores were crowded on a typical before coronavirus kind of Friday. And I watched a probably two-year-old throw a temper tantrum. Somewhere between the Cheerios and Frosted Flakes, something made him very unhappy. He screamed at the top of his voice. And when that didn't work, he decided to stop breathing. His face turned red. His lips turned slightly blue. And I wondered what to do. His mom, however, seemed totally (laughs) unconcerned. She knew that he would eventually breathe. And he did. Now, I've thrown my fair share of tenter tamperings with God. I've decided in anger or in my grief to stop breathing spiritually. When God didn't respond with sirens or paramedics, I was tempted to decide that God wasn't there. But like that mother, he's there all the time. And it was as if he was saying to me, you'll breathe again at the right time. At the right time. God is closer than the air we breathe. And here's something else about breath. Most of us use only a small portion of our lung capacity. We're shallow breathers. We breathe on the surface, not from the depths of our being, and that may be why we're short of breath so much. The same is true spiritually. We dabble around the surface. But a Growing spiritual person is a person who is learning how to breathe. Breathe on me, breath of God, we sing. 
Philosopher Kierkegaard used to pray it this way. He said, teach me, O God, not to torture myself, not to make a martyr of myself through stifling reflection, but rather teach me to breathe deeply in my faith. Can we hear the great rattling of bones? I do not believe this season of strangeness that we are in will be brief. I hope our social distancing and the upending that comes with it flattens that curve and interrupts the rapid spread of COVID-19. And before we get back to normal life, and I'm putting that in quotes, maybe it would be a good time to ask, to ask the Lord to open our eyes about which part of that former life are worthy of our return. Breathe, seek, breathe, ask, breathe. I want to thank again the praise team for their beautiful music. It's a blessing to us all. Thank you so much. Would you now join your hearts with mine in prayer? Lord, we come before you as one. Our needs are many, but you know them all. You hear the prayers day and night as we intercede for the world. And we ask that in addition to bringing solutions and treatments for this virus, that you would help people with food and shelter, companionship, friendship, justice, that you would move among the leaders of the world to bring an uncommon unity. Help us come through this time better for it, Lord, learning what is more essential to you being more available to you. Help us to live like your first followers. Help us to be more and more like Jesus. And so we turn to those disciples and ask, Lord, that you would help us to pray with open hearts the prayer that you gave them. And hear us as we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And then lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
It's good to be with you this morning in worship. Our benediction comes from Psalm 121. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this day forth and forevermore. Amen.